Good morning, everybody. I'm on Southeast Main Street in Douglas, about three miles from our house. And this pond behind me is always quite pretty during the Columbus Day weekend. But our event for today is U-2 spy planes photographing Russian missile bases on Cuba, October 14, 1962, beginning what we now know as the Cuban Missile Crisis. With the Monroe Doctrine of 1823, the United States basically told the rest of the world that we considered the Caribbean as our backyard. And in the Spanish-American War of 1898, we not only took over Puerto Rico, but we basically started to control Cuba. And in the early 1900s, we built the Panama Canal. Here's a picture of men working in Panama, as well as a picture of our president, Teddy Roosevelt, who went down to Panama while president, and here he is sitting in a big steam shovel. Well, after World War II, the Cold War began, and each side set up a military alliance. We set up NATO, and the Soviets set up the Warsaw Pact. And these were basically set up for a land war in Europe. But because each side had nuclear weapons that could travel far distances, it was possible that conflict would happen outside of Europe. Well, in the 1950s, Cuba was known as an island full of nightclubs, parties, wild living. All the major corporations were American or run by the Americans, and even today you can see these old American cars that are still there in Cuba. Well, in 1956, Fidel Castro started a guerrilla movement in Cuba, partly uh, to get rid of the Americans. And in 1959, here he is coming into Havana. So Cuba was going to become communist. And our new president in the early 60s was JFK, and this was a big issue for Kennedy, the possibility of a communist government in Cuba. So there had been a plan approved by Eisenhower for a CIA group to invade Cuba at the Bay of Pigs and overthrow Castro. Well, this was the worst kept secret in the hemisphere. Fidel knew all about it. He was waiting at the Bay of Pigs. It was a disaster for the United States and made Fidel a hero. But also that same year, the Berlin Wall was built in 1961. So things were getting really, really tense. Well, in the mid-1950s, the CIA had an airplane developed by Lockheed called the U-2. It could fly really high, and its goal was to take pictures. And it had a special camera, pictured here, that could take pictures from far, far away in great detail. And here you see an image of the camera being put in the belly of a U-2 airplane. So we started flying over the Soviet Union, and in 1960, one of our pilots was shot down, and he parachuted and was captured, and here he is, Francis Gary Powers. Eisenhower had denied the U-2 flights, so this was a big embarrassment for him. The U-2 flights also were going over Cuba, and on this date, October 14, in 1962, we took these pictures, or pictures like these, of Russian missile bases and realized that the Russians had missiles all over Cuba. This was very scary because missiles could hit a number of places in our country. So Kennedy's advisors wanted him to invade Cuba, but he wouldn't. He decided to do a blockade, and in the background was all kinds of negotiating. And uh, the Russians backed down, but we publicly said we would pull our missiles from Turkey. So it would look like they pull their missiles from Cuba, we pull ours from Turkey. What the world didn't know was that we were going to do that anyway because these missiles from the Polaris submarine were going to take the place of the missiles in Turkey. But it was a diplomatic maneuver. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, we set up a teletype machine with the Russians. But in popular culture, it was known as the Red Phone or the Hotline. And in the movie Failsafe, here's Henry Fonda talking to the... So it premiered to try to avoid World War III. We did sign a treaty with the Russians, though, in 1963. And that did diffuse a lot of the tensions. 
from the Cuban Missile Crisis.